So my name is Jemima and I am the third daughter of Jonathan Kaner. He had quite a few of us. Um, I'm really, really grateful and excited to be here. And I'm so, so excited to be able to share some insights into next year with you all. And hopefully to offer a little bit of reassurance as to some of the things which are causing people to wobble um, when they look ahead. Uh, I know there's been lots in the, you know, little bits on the internet or in the news about movements and what it all could mean so I hope that I've done you know a realistic and fair job of looking into what is happening what we might need to feel a little bit worried about and mostly why we don't need to worry at all um we've had a few questions submitted in advance and I'm intending to answer all of those at the end, so I've prepared a few answers. If you've got questions which you haven't submitted in advance, if you want to put them in the Q&A, I will do my best to answer them if we've got time before my babysitting clock runs out. And if I've got time, I'll be able to do that. Um, yeah, so as, as they come up or as, as I'm talking, feel free to pop a question in the Q&A section and I'll do my best to get through them. Fingers crossed this is not going to be a one-off event. I'm hoping that we'll be able to make this a bit more of a regular thing, uh, especially for Five Star users. So it means that if you don't get your question answered, there might be an opportunity further down the line for either me to do a whole webinar on a particular topic or to answer some more specific questions as well. So um, bear with me while I just find my notes again. and I'll make a start. Okie doke. So, what's happening in 2024? Let's have a little look at the major moves. I have listed here the biggest shifts of planets moving into signs, eclipses, and of course, we have this majorly rare conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, which I'll talk quite a lot about as we get there. Um, this is in order of appearance. So Pluto moves into Aquarius um, at the end of January. Pluto briefly moved into Aquarius this year. It's been moving in and out because of retrogrades. But actually, 2024 is the year that Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius and stays there for the long term. Pluto moves signs so rarely that it really is the definition of an era. Now, as you'll see from some of the questions, there is debate about whether this signals the age of Aquarius or not. Different astrologers have lots of different opinions on what would constitute an age in those terms. Um, but the, the main thing is that this is going to be a huge shift on a global level. We'll feel it personally. We'll see it reflected in our personal lives as well. But what we are going to see is a more collective shift of consciousness. So the first thing after that, which is going to really shake things up in the world and certainly be felt on a wider, wider scale, sorry, will be the solar eclipse. Um, and that is happening at the beginning of April. This is followed by a conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. So they these planets, which are outer planets, and they move incredibly slowly, they tend to form a conjunction, which is where they are at the same point in the sign and the same point in the sky once every 14 years. And I'll talk a bit more about that when we get on to them. Then we're going to talk about Jupiter, which is moving into Gemini on the 25th of May and transiting that sign, which is really exciting. And then I'm going to finish by talking a bit more about Pluto, um, because Pluto has got some unfinished business back in Capricorn, which it needs to dip into. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the annual eclipse as well, um, which is happening in October. So the next thing that I wanted to raise, which is something that people question all the time, is retrogrades. Um, these are nothing to panic about. <laughs> We're in a retrograde at the moment, which is why I was a tiny bit nervous about running a technical event in a Mercury retrograde. And why am I nervous? Because even I get sort of under the thumb of this soundbite 
issue that we everything is going to go wrong in a retrograde and we kind of jump onto things like that as human beings and it's natural and things do go wrong which is you know it's to be expected and it's fine and a lot of the time astrologically speaking this signals something deeper going on and a bit of a redirection so mercury is going to be retrograde until the 2nd of january and then it moves retrograde again from the 1st of April till the 25th. And that's happening in Aries. Now, interestingly, that will be happening whilst we have this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, where we have this conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter and also the solar eclipse. Um, and that will have an impact, which I'll talk in more detail about. Um, the third time that Mercury will move retrograde will be in August in the sign of Virgo. We've got Uranus moving direct. It's in retrograde at the moment. And in January on the 27th, it's going to move direct again. Um, Neptune is going to move retrograde again. Neptune is direct at the moment. And that will be moving retrograde from July. And Pluto is going to move retrograde in May up until the 12th of October. And that's when it moves back into the sign of Capricorn or appears to. And we also have Mars moving retrograde right at the end of the year, 6th of December, in the sign of Leo. So, the first thing on the agenda, after we gloss over the tiny little issue of um, Pluto moving into Aquarius, is this solar eclipse in Aries. Now, this is huge it's a really exciting eclipse because it's in Aries and Aries is the sign of pioneering spirit this is about new starts and it's also signal <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I've been given a lovely Christmas cold by my children um so this signals unexpected opportunities and I'll tell you why there are some other planets going so a solar eclipse is um the moment when the sun is eclipsed by the earth sorry the moon moving in between the earth and the sun and the reason why this one is exciting is because it's about to set the tone for the rest of the year it's impulsive it's quite dynamic and it is also demonstrating our potential to break through for pockets of freedom. There is going to be a major shakeup on a global scale, as well as in our personal lives from this eclipse. The good news is that the sun and the moon are conjunct, but Mercury's there as well. And Mercury is di is not direct so mercury is retrograde and it's in the sign of aries now mercury and aries sometimes can blurt things out and make things happen before the consequences have really had time to to play out and when we're talking about big global events and things getting exciting actually it's very helpful to have a retrograde mercury because it means that we can slow down and have a moment to think before we jump right into things now, the other thing that's going on <clears throat> within the chart of this eclipse is that we have got Chiron there, which is also conjunct with the sun and the moon, which represents a healing element. And there is also a Mars and Saturn conjunction. It's not an exact conjunction, but it is there. And that will offer a chance for compassionate restraint which again is very helpful because sometimes with eclipses and big moves like this, everybody wants to jump feet first into things. And on, if we're talking about political movements and Uranus and Jupiter getting involved, th that is when people tend to find things get a little bit worrying and they get scared and rightly so because these planets don't mess around. They're big and they represent huge shifts. So the good news is that these other planets are holding a bit of a leash of restraint around this um, and they're supporting this eclipse to be a positive influence rather than a negative but that does not mean that there will not be big shake-ups so the next event 
on the calendar is this conjunction between you <coughs> between Uranus and Jupiter. So this event will happen around every 14 years. That's when these cycles tend to converge and these two planets connect and they end up in the same part of the sky at the same time. So it's a rare event. Every 14 years, we see this maybe a few times in our lifetimes. This conjunction represents major political and financial shifts. It's probably indicative of some level of expansion. And that's because of Jupiter's influence as the amplifier on Uranus. Um, the reason that it's gonna probably affect the finances of the world and on this global scale is because it's happening in Taurus. And that is the sign that oversees that. Now, Uranus is a rebellious planet and it encourages freedom. It is all about expansion into new areas, freedom, and restructure. So this is indicative of some major changes. Now, the last time this happened, it happened twice. So I just said it only ever happens once every 14 years. Actually, the last time it happened, it happened in 2010 and 2011. Um, and it wasn't in the sign of Taurus, it was in a different sign. But if you kind of think back to that point in your life and have a think about what was happening in 2010, 2011, you probably can pinpoint some moments where you found that you were going through some kind of upheaval, potentially dealing with some surprising news or a bit of a shock, and that even this may have transformed into an opportunity quite unexpectedly. So on a personal level, that's what we can expect. This is change, and all changes represent some discomfort. You know, most of us are not comfortable with massive amounts of change. Politically, these planets encourage freedom and choice. And I don't know if anybody else remembers those endlessly seeming referendums back in sort of 2010, 2011, especially in the UK. You know, it's about that demand for a voice and also about a representation of choice. Now, this year in the UK, obviously, we're moving into an election year. We've had the announcement that, or, you know, one in a series of announcements about how this will be an election year. We can probably expect a big shift and potentially an element of discontent and a lack of consensus. These planets combined have connotations with earth energy and, oh, sorry, uh, air energy and fire energy. And that tends to be, um, it can be destructive we can we can think about this in terms of actually it's quite a masculine force of energy which is not necessarily a, a bad thing at all but it can be um an energy caused by the planets which is swooping into action without too much thought about what's going to happen afterwards it's not got a massive focus on consequences it's more about shaking things up and especially in Taurus which is a sign of traditions um, this time we can definitely expect some serious shake-ups in those realms so we're, we're thinking about breaking traditions potentially you know opportunities around money and freedom these two planets working together could signal a major shift in the way that the world views its resources the way it uses them and it poses an important question for humanity as well to look at where our values are. What do we value? And at what point do we draw the line? Because these planets are not interested in, in those lines being drawn, okay? They wanna, they wanna get out there. Um, now, famously, the book Frankenstein was published under a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, um, you know, and this sort of, reference back to the disruption of status quo and a warning for humanity about what happens when power goes unchecked, um, especially in the realm of technology. And I think we can probably see that actually that has still quite a lot of relevance now in terms of, you know, scientific movements. We've got AI, cryptocurrency, and I would predict that we see some pretty major shakeups and some revolutionizing of the way that we manage resources, banking, and that traditional and potentially outdated models of thinking are probably going to be quite seriously disrupted.
Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen overnight. These events that are happening throughout the year are more catalytic okay these are the starting points for these bigger shifts which are going to span decades so there is good news if any of that kind of worries you a little bit about the big political shifts and you know um all of this unbridled energy of <laughs> expansion into new territory um, and I kind of had a look at this chart because initially I was thinking, oh, God, OK, yeah, these are ooh, it's a bit shaky. Um, so I looked into the chart. And I could see all of that potential, but I also saw some really reassuring signals. So the first thing is that when you look at the chart of this exact event, there is a kite formation. And now astrologically, that is an indicator for positivity. It's auspicious. Taurus is a fixed sign and it's ruled by Venus. So this steadies the event, it tames it. Now Taurus demands that where there are traditions to be disrupted, care must be taken for comfort. And that is very encouraging when it comes to thinking about the people. You know, us at the end of these great big political shifts and these potential pockets of revolution, that actually there are forces at play here which suggest that there will be some restraint. Now, there's also a really good indicator of that in that Mars and Saturn and Neptune are all in Pisces, which is a very compassionate and humanistic sign, and that could indicate some good humanitarian positivity as well. Now, as I mentioned, Mercury is retrograde in Aries at this point. That's again, that's a major blessing. It's going to allow time to reconsider and to make plans for new growth, which is sparked by this catalytic, excuse me, catalytic event. <clears throat> On the other side of this chart, we also have the tempering influence of the moon in Virgo. She is in opposition to Mars and Saturn and making the case for sensible wisdom that is hugely reassuring to me when I looked at this I think there's going to be a lot of chat about huge things bubbling up around April and a lot of concern for where that could end up and I think we can be reassured that the moon is in that sign of Virgo and offering some restraint and some sensibility and just after this exact conjunction she then moves into Libra and that is a great sign for applying balance So the next transit on the list in 2024 is that Jupiter is moving. So Jupiter has been in Taurus this year. Um, and if you have felt like progress and opportunities have been slow and steady, maybe, um, but not necessarily a pace that you would like, then get ready because this promises to shake things up. This transit promises some flexibility in thinking. This is going to spark a real open minded approach amongst everybody. Um, I'm really optimistic about this transit. I think that it's going to really help with everything else that's going on in the world in 2024. Um, and I think we could probably see some big announcements in the world of journalism, writing, creativity. Not only that, but Jupiter is the planet which represents faith and our wider deeper thinking so in the sign of gemini which is ruled by mercury which is inquisitive and sharp and wants to know the answer we can see questions forming and i think we can also see connections forming i think that as a collective consciousness i think we are going to see people really looking into where they can find meaning and examining for themselves <clears throat> what really matters are we really so sure about what we know? I think that we are going to see some huge, interesting theological debates. And hopefully as well, that what could be sparked under this transit is some really interesting connections being made and some reaching out, especially into faith. And I think that is a really positive, encouraging thing, um, especially with everything that's going on in the world. Um, now, it's going to be a roller coaster. Jupiter into Gemini is exciting. It's, there's no doubt about that. But I do believe that there is going to be some real coming together um, of different polarities, actually, um, and 
expanding on that, we could see connection rather than disconnection. So in September, the power planet Pluto moves back into Capricorn. So if you remember from the beginning of me talking all of this back in January, it's about to move into Aquarius, which is hugely exciting. Um, ultimately, this is going to bring concerns about humanity to the forefront of our collective consciousness. Pluto moving into Aquarius as a whole is a signal for an age of enlightenment. It is potentially a little bit frustrating for quite a lot of people that um, Pluto will then be moving, dipping back into Capricorn. But this is, again, this is a positive transit. The fact that Pluto is able to move back into Capricorn just for those couple of months is really going to help seal the deal on unfinished business. That is the takeaway here. Capricorn is <clears throat> all about getting things done and it's about achievements. And um, it's great actually that Pluto is going to move back into Capricorn and this is an opportunity for closure, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so by November, that's the point when Pluto will have moved into Aquarius for the long haul. And this really is the beginning of a new era. Whether I would call it the age of Aquarius is another debate, but it's less about overnight changes and it's more about this groundbreaking energy of cracking open taboos and the revolution and enlightenment that comes from having the knowledge, having the knowledge of really what's going on. That's what I think Pluto in um, Aquarius is going to do. It's going to bring out the secrets, things that are going on under the surface, that's going to get brought out. And the question then becomes, what we do with that as a collective. And, and that's really the emphasis here because collective consciousness is an Aquarian ruled um, trait of humanity. And so Pluto in this sign of the water bearer offers us the sharing of knowledge. And when these hidden power structures, secrets, and all the under the surface things that are going on are revealed, it allows us this knowledge and knowledge gives power and with power comes responsibility to do the right thing so I think we are going to see decades long movements under this Pluto in Aquarius transit which will really be bringing all of these questions to the forefront of our collective consciousness and you know questioning where we go um as a planet The last solar eclipse of the year as well, the annular eclipse is in Libra. And this eclipse represents some lovely restorative balance and some healing energy. And again, another chance for closure as well. I think especially with this link with Pluto in which will be in Capricorn at this point. So, I'm just going to have a real quick check of the Q&A and the chat for a moment. And then I'm going to answer um, some of the questions that have been sent in in advance. So hopefully we've got those people here. I'm going to stop sharing this now. So hopefully you can see my lovely snotty face. Apologies for that. <laughs> okay. I can see there's another couple of um, questions here in the Q&A section. Um, I'll do my best to get to them, but I'm going to go through the questions that we were sent in first. So the first one of those is from, bear with me a moment. Okay, so the first question is from Ginny, and she asks, I know Pluto will move fully into Aquarius this year, and I wondered if you might share, please, whether this is likely to have more of an effect on Aquarians than other star signs, and if so, in what way? 
I also wondered if this increasing focus on Aquarius might be linked with the upcoming age of Aquarius. Now, I um, was obviously raised by my dad uh, and he knew lots of astrologers, actually. And we would so hearing about the age of Aquarius is something that I, I have heard in the background my whole life. And it's something that as an astrologer now, I still um I'm still learning about and that's because there is no consensus there is no consensus about what the age of Aquarius really is there's lots and lots of debate there's lots of angles on it um but I think we would need an entire webinar to discuss that and maybe that's a topic that we could cover next year actually I'm I'm totally up for that um and looking into it in depth so the easy part to answer is absolutely yes Aquarians are likely to feel this shift but we all are Aquarians are going to notice it more acutely and they are going to see shifts in their core values and their creativity because that's where their sun sign is. So if they're a sun sign, they're a sun sign Aquarian and Pluto is entering that sign of where their sun is, that's about their core self and it's about that real um, spirit identity. Now, Aquarians generally through this transit are going to have their purpose in life transformed, which could be really empowering. Um, I see this as a hugely positive change and transformation for Aquarius. However, with any changes, there's going to be a period of discomfort. And um, that's that's tough to na navigate. But overall, this is positive changes. You know, it's what needs to happen. So the next question that we had sent in was a question from uh, somebody called Dawn. And it took me a little bit of time to get my head around this one because uh, I'll read you the question and then I'll kind of talk you through my process. So the question is, when does the equinox season start and finish? Is it relative to the eclipse moon somehow? I read that the eclipse season lasts for 34.5 days, but cannot find any information as to how to calculate when the season starts and finishes. Best wishes. Long time fan of your dad's, your dad's work. Dawn, that's really nice to hear. Thank you for your question, Dawn. Um, I needed help to kind of understand this question because it, it feels to me like it's about eclipses, but also equinoxes. And they are different things. And I'm now looking at, okay, well, how do we calculate it? Well, we calculate it with uh, an ephemeris. That's what astrologers do. Um, so th when, it, when you say season, that's the bit I think that was throwing me a little bit because there isn't really a season of equinox. It's it's other than the season of the hemisphere that you're in. So we're in the Northern hemisphere in the UK and we have um, a spring equinox in our springtime and the autumn equinox in our autumn time. But actually equinoxes fall around the same time every year because that is the exact point when the sun crosses the celestial equator. So there is a very exact time which can be calculated um, using an ephemeris and you can see exactly when that will be. So we get these two equinoxes a year um, and it's when the sun enters Aries and Libra in the Northern hemisphere, these fall in those um, seasons. And I hope that kind of answers your question in terms of the season. Um, in between them, we have the solstices. So an equinox is the point when the day and night are of equal length. And a solstice is when we have the longest day of the year and the shortest, because that's when the sun is furthest from that point. Um, so it is relative to the eclipses in the same way that everything, all events that happen in our zodiac are relative and they're all relative to where we're viewing that zodiac from so as astrologers we are looking to the zodiac and the heavens above us from our position on earth and when we look up and we see planetary movements across the sky we are looking at them in relation to where we are and the way that we calculate an eclipse and an equinox and label them and date them is is the same so the eclipses also follow that similar pattern in a way because they always occur when the planets involved and the luminaries are at an exact point on that zodiac as we see it from Earth. Um, hopefully, they're also related to the phase of the moon as well because that determines how far away the, the moon is from the sun. Hopefully, that kind of answers your question, 
but if you want to rephrase it or or kind of I'm happy to I'm happy to try and try and understand it a little better and, and give you a bit of a better answer for that um because I might have I might have misread your question a little bit there um the third question that we have I'm just gonna have a, a quick sip of my tea here because I can I feel my throat <clears throat> so this question is from a lady called Pavinda. My question for your insight, I hear a lot about Mars retrograde in December 2024 and December the 6th being a tough date for Aries from personal and professional angles. Please suggest what you think about this. I'm looking forward to your insights. I see a lot of focus on December the 6th for Aries and it seems a tough time for Aries around December the 6th. So thank you so much for your question it does move retrograde mars does move retrograde on the 6th of december this year but i don't want you to worry about it so my dad used to um say something when i was growing up with him about how the you know if anyone would ask him or sometimes i would ask him questions okay so is this bad then is this bad does this is this a bad thing for me you know like i'm a cancerian is this bad for me um and he would just say actually the only thing that guarantees a bad time or a tough time for any zodiac sign is somebody being told in advance that they're about to have a bad time and then believing it because there is great great power in what you believe is going to happen which is why I'm so so excited to answer this for you and tell you that please don't worry you are not about to have some kind of doomsday issue if you're an Aries on uh, the 6th of December or well, certainly not not the way I see it Mars does move retrograde in the sign of Leo then. It's not just Aries that will be affected. Uh, Scorpios and Leos will be feeling it more acutely as well, especially at the beginning. But it stays retrograde for a number of weeks, actually up until February 2025. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I kind of made some notes here thinking, right, what, what could we see as being bad? Well, I suppose we might have to go back over issues which we believed we had maybe solved or look again at our justification for taking certain actions. That's not bad. We might find that we have to slow down, that we have this feeling of physically our drive forwards needs to kind of slow a bit, or we need to take a bit more time with our creative projects. Again, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and I think the other thing that really is has potential to come up especially in December is that there might be a moment of a bit of humble pie to be eaten not necessarily for Aries but for quite a few people on the zodiac and again that's not necessarily a bad thing there's something about Mars moving retrograde which represents a point of humility and and um, self-awareness um, and that can only help people grow so this is good stuff for Aries. This is not about a doomsday issue or everything going wrong on the 6th of December. But yeah, be prepared for some issues cropping up from the past that you maybe thought had been resolved. That that There's potential for that, but definitely not a bad day and certainly not a bad transit for Aries. <clears throat> so the next question that we've had asked is from Jenny. Hi Jemima, my partner is away at the moment and has been planning to come back for some time now but there always seems to be delays or hiccups of some kind. Is this going to happen anytime soon as getting really frustrated with waiting? My Cana horoscopes constantly say it's nearly there but when? Thanks Jenny. So Jenny, this is a bit of a tough one to answer, especially because I can't see your partner's chart. I can see your I can see your sign because um, you're a five star member. So I can see that I think you're a Libra, um, but I can't really determine when your partner will do something because it's beyond my realm of influence and it's beyond yours as well. But what I do know is that the more that you focus on your frustration around not knowing when this is going to happen and when this issue is going to be resolved for you, the more that frustration will grow. 
and the more important that frustration will feel in your life. I think the main focus and takeaway here is that we cannot control what anybody else does. And the best way to deal with this is to focus on what is within your power right now. I would trust that the things will happen when they need to. And that delays sometimes can indicate that the universe knows what's best for us. And it's not always what we want or in a time frame that we're happy with. Um, if I'm hoping down the line that I'm going to be able to do some Q&A sessions, which are based on more specific questions like this, um, and really go in depth looking at charts as well. So hopefully we'll we'll get a chance to revisit this. But I would say the fact that things are shifting so much this year, it won't be that long. You don't have that much more to, look, to wait. And if I'm wrong, send me a message and we'll look at why. So the next question that we have is from somebody called Jane. And it says, I have worked extremely hard to keep our branch going while we've had no manager. I'd like to know if I will be offered the position soon. So I can see on here that Jane is a Capricorn and Capricorns are probably the hardest working sign in the Zodiac. And they have a bit of a habit of picking up the slack and working harder than anybody else. And they often don't actually get as much recognition for that as people might think. And it sounds like that is kind of what's been happening here. Now, my real world experience, especially sort of in corporate situations or bigger institutions, which I've worked in a few of, is that hard work often gets taken advantage of, but it doesn't always get rewarded, especially if there is no prompt to do that. I think this question is really about how you value your time and energy. You've obviously invested a lot of it and you need to know where you stand in terms of whether or not that is being reciprocated and rightly valued by wherever you're working now this year promises some major transformation for you we've got pluto moving out of capricorn coming back in sealing the deal at sort of halfway through the year i would say if you do not get offered this position fairly soon within the next few months ask for it you will know exactly where you stand and if you are not being valued you can take that work that you've put in and that investment and everything that you've learned and go somewhere where you do feel recognized. So we have got another question here, which is from David. Um, and David shares a birthday with my eldest son, which is so David is a Leo and he's asked, uh, I would like to find out if I should continue trying to get my video business going, as in the new year, I should have a new job to help pay the bills better. I would enjoy having a business and feel like it's going nowhere. I also like to get some information on moving from my flat to a different place so that I can plan on when to do this. So the, the tricky thing with answering questions about moving is that it involves a very specific um, it's part of astrology so to advise on that um, in terms of a move it, it's it's relative to which place um, and that you cast a chart for each place so it's slightly more complex it would take a bit longer to go into that I would need to know a bit more detail about where you're planning on moving to and things like that but I can say that actually um, as a Leo I think the last year things have felt quite stop and start and not as things haven't been moving as fast as a lot of Leos maybe necessarily wanted to them. There's hurdles for Leo that have, they've had to jump through in 2023. Um, and a video business sounds like it's going to have a really positive influence by this Jupiter moving to Gemini. So this move into Gemini is going to give a massive boost, I think, to editing, journalism, creative media. Um, so I would say keep on it. Um, be patient give yourself a break when you need to but don't give up because there's real promise that next year actually things are going to start moving in the right direction for you um and the other thing is that the thing that never really gets kind of a spotlight on is that when there is success stories like an overnight sensation or things really lifting off the ground nobody talks about the graph that's gone on in the background um 
so don't give up before you get to a breakthrough because that's usually the point where you feel like this is going nowhere um and that's usually a good sign that you're close um i think we've had another question in advance this is another tricky one actually um this is from kim who is a capricorn and the question is if i were to have surgery when would be the best time to book it? Now, <laughs> uh, I will preface this by saying I am not a doctor. I did think about wishing I was going to be a doctor when I was a kid for a while until I realised I don't really like hospitals, um, you know, and I didn't really fancy going down that route. So I would say that the short answer to this question is the best time to have surgery is when your doctor advises you to. Having said that, there are a few astrological approaches that you can take when you're looking at whether it's a good time for surgery. Um, and the main one tends to be looking at the moon and Mars. And that's because the moon rules your physical body and your soul. Um, and <clears throat> there's some evidence or astrological thinking, which says that when the moon is in a fixed sign, the surgeon's hand is steadier. So that's where that comes from, that, that thinking in, in the astrologers who would advise on surgery, which is not me. I, I do not feel um, necessarily equipped to give you advice on that, but I can, get, I can give you that information that if you um, look for when the moon is in a fixed sign, that's supposed to be a really good indicator. But what really makes a big difference as well when we're looking at this astrologically is the area of the body that is to be treated medically. And that's because different planets rule different parts of the body traditionally. So I would need more information about what kind of surgery um, whereabouts on the body and to, to look at it from that point of view. But unfortunately, that is not the kind of astrology that um, I that's about where I draw my line, I'm afraid, in that. Um, yeah, I think if your doctor is advising you that it's safe, that's probably the best indicator for you to go for it. Um, the last question that I have been sent in advance is from Heather. And it just says, good morning. When will this destructive geopolitical insanity cease? Um, and that's a really good question. And I think it's one that we're all looking for the answer for on some level. So I really wish, Heather and everybody, that I could just declare world peace coming in 2024 and then it would happen. Um, I am much more realistic than that and I don't want to promise things which are not going to happen. I think that we will see things looking like they're getting worse before they get better, but I am positive and hopeful that things really will get better the geopolitical landscape is going to be bumpy this year because of these shifts with Uranus and Jupiter and these movements there is going to be things happening which are going to be pulling different people in different directions and that lays the scene for conflict but from conflict sometimes diplomacy can strike connection and I think that there is real potential that we are going to see crucial moments on a smaller scale when things pivot towards the positive. And overall, that is where things will be going. It feels like a scary place to be the world at the moment for a lot of us. And it does not feel like there is an end in sight to human suffering and destruction and some quite horrendous themes. But things will get better. I can't promise you exactly when. I do think we're going to have more ups and downs this year, but overall we're going to see progression and things getting better for more people. I think we're going to see a shift in consciousness to a more humanitarian future. Um, and I really believe in that. And I hope that from what I've discussed through this webinar that we can see that as well, that there is good things coming. Um, and in the meantime, we can only do what we can do, which is to stay hopeful. And when we feel powerless, to focus what is in our control and that we can always choose to be a good person and to notice the good in the world and focus on building on that instead of giving in to fear. Um, so hopefully that answers that question as best I'm able to at the moment. Um, <clears throat> we have got another couple of minutes. 
I'll just have a little look in the Q and A. If anybody's got any other questions about anything that I've talked about in the last 45, 50 minutes or so, please feel free to pop them in here and I'll have a little look. I can see um, Shan Jones. Hi there, I wonder what the year would look like for Virgos, please, particularly for business and finances. So next year looks good for Virgos, it does, but there is going to be an element of needing to take your own advice sometimes. There will be good collaborations coming for Virgos in 2024. So look out for those and lean into those connections because for Virgos, there's a lot of responsibility on their shoulders next year, um, but actually they have more support than they might realize. Um, I can see another one here. This uh, Gauss Mahudin. Um, I hope I've said that right. I probably haven't. Sorry. Hi, date of birth is uh, okay. So Capricorn. I started my staffing business in 2021. I haven't seen much success. When can I see good business? Okay. So when we're looking at a business rather than a person <clears throat> so your date of birth is a Capricorn Capricorn um will have a slightly different reading um than your business because you, you you've given me your date of birth but not the conception of your business so it, I've just got the year 2021 so I don't have quite enough to go off in, in order to give you a detailed answer to that but I would suggest that things will probably pick up um, and you'll be able to see where you're at when Pluto re-enters Capricorn around September time um, and you'll be able to do an assessment at that point and see you know what what's working and what maybe needs looking at again um I can see a Pisces here Joanne Cliff I've had a terrible year I'm really sorry to hear that is 2024 going to be any better for Pisces Joanne, yes, it's going to be better for Pisces, but it is not going to be necessarily easier. <laughs> um, the thing is with Pisces at the moment is that Saturn's moving through your sign and that is giving you some really tough lessons to learn. Um, and I'm sure if you've been having a really terrible year and you've been going through some hard things, you will have undoubtedly kind of got to the see how good you are at coping and see how strong you are as well. 2024 should be easier for Pisces ish um it will be getting better but it's going to be better because you already know how much you can handle rather than anything massive changing um but hang on in there because if you can get through another year of things being a bit tougher when Saturn does start moving through your sign and pushing to those end degrees and then leaving, things are going to feel hugely transformed um, and for the better, like long term. So hopefully um, you've got this. You're going to be OK. Pisces are much stronger than we give them credit for. Um, I believe in you and I think you can make it through. OK. An anonymous attendee is asking now, uh, is this the year to dive headfirst into spirituality? I've started meditating this year and I regularly do one plus, well, more than an hour a day. I feel like I'm on the cusp of either going all in or drifting back to being a part-time hobby hippie. I think that's completely fine. I haven't even got to the end of the question. Uh, when I get to the point of letting go in meditation, it feels like I'm going to be sucked into an ocean and I pull back. It's terrifying. Is this the year to go full hippie? Thanks. Okay. Yes, this is the year to go full hippie. But if you're feeling a sense of fear when you're meditating, it can be very, very helpful, I think, to reach out to somebody who um, does guided meditation or potentially somebody that you can trust. Because if you're going deep into your subconscious um, and dealing with unconscious issues, that it sounds like you're you're hitting a point of, of feeling fearful and that's something you can definitely work through with meditation I know I've done that before but I think it's best done in a safe place with a practitioner um I would reach out to like-minded people I'm not sure what kind of meditation you're doing but maybe do it in a supported way that feels safe um 
and there's nothing wrong with being a hobby hippie. I'm a hobby hippie. I grew up being, I think, immersed in being full-time hippie. And actually, I consider myself more of a hobby hippie now. I love it. <laughs> so thank you for your question. And I hope that answers it. Um, I'm going to try and answer a couple more. Dawn here, apologies. Oh, I seem to have written solstice and I meant eclipse. I'm trying to work out when the eclipse season starts and finish. Uh, oh, okay, so Dawn, this relates to your question earlier, I think. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to email you, Don. You emailed your question, didn't you? Hopefully, I've sent you the, um, I've, I've given you that answer that basically the eclipses are relative to where the moon and the sun is in the zodiac. And you can look this up in an ephemeris. Um, the 34.5 long is that, I'm not sure if you mean days. If you could email me with that clarification, I'm happy to kind of go back and forth if I get a chance uh, next week. Um. Sharon Allen. Hi, Jemima. I sent a late question, which was more a personal question. Generally, I'd like to know. OK, I'm, I don't think I've seen that yet, but I'll have a little look in the inbox. Generally, I'd like to know if this is going to be a good year for Sag. Yes, it's going to be a good year for Sagittarius people. Um, I, for one, have had oh, a lot of disappointments in 2023. 2023 has been really tough for Sagittarius. Um, I know a lot of Saggies that have really been going through the mill. Um, we've seen this transit of Jupiter which is your ruling planet in um, Taurus has kind of disrupted stability actually for um, Sagittarians so it's it's been a slow moving slow moving in terms of opportunities as well which doesn't feel great for Sagis because they they like things to happen a bit faster so yes 100% 2024 does look like a better year for Sagittarius. I think it's a year of real empowerment for Sagittarians. Um, but you are going to find that you are questioning things, especially about yourself as well. When when that Jupiter moves into Gemini, you're probably going to find that you have potentially more questions than answers, but that's no bad thing for a Sagittarius. So yeah, hang on in there. Next year definitely looks more positive for you. Okay. Um, Dale Stevens. Dale's asking, are you going to join your uncle in the Kana astrology business to a more significant extent now? I have been following Kana astrology for more than 30 years. Wow, amazing. So useful advice I've received. Regards, Dale. That's so lovely. Thank you, Dale, for your question. Um, am I so my uncle um is um, is my uncle Daniel. That's my dad's brother, and actually it's Oscar is my cousin um so yeah our dads were brothers and I'm hoping to work more with Oscar this year um and to do some more work with Kana.com as well and do some more work with Five Star because I'm really excited to be able to have more of this kind of um community feeling uh and I'm fingers crossed that I'll be able to do more of these webinars and more interactive sessions as well so yeah watch this space I'm excited I'm really looking forward to what the future will bring and I'm very proud and grateful to be able to be joining in with the you know the legacy business that my dad left behind uh I didn't see eye to eye with him about astrology or lots of things when he was here you know uh, he died when I was 25 so it wasn't um yeah I wasn't able to kind of come full circle and embrace that that parental thing of being like oh yeah okay you were right you know that comes a bit later I think I'm getting to that point now I'm in my 30s uh but this feels the same so yeah I'm hoping that we are going to be joining in more um so we have got another minute I think so somebody's raised their hands um what I will do though I'm looking there's lots and lots of questions here so I'm going to do my best to preserve them um, because I won't have time to answer them today but hopefully we will get to a point where we can go through some more of these um, and you know potentially I could even open books for one-to-ones we'll we'll see see what January brings um, I'll just double check if there's anybody I can see uh, Rob Diaz has raised his hand um, do you want to pop a, a quick question in the Q&A? I 
I can see that the last question there, I'm going to answer this last one before I go. Sorry, late question. Listening in the car in France, am I likely to find someone to share my life with this year? Thanks, Julie. Um, I wrote Love Horoscopes for 2024, so keep an eye out for them. I, without knowing your sign, I can't give you much more information, but I think focus on loving yourself first. Get that relationship with yourself and your own self-acceptance to a point where you feel great even if you haven't got anybody to share your life with and lean into connections that you've got that maybe aren't romantic and when you're in that position the love that you find which you will find will be the right one for you um okay I'm gonna wrap this up because I'd love to sit here all day and answer these questions I, I actually love answering questions I've got Mercury and Gemini so it suits me hopefully we'll do this again um and thank you so so much for joining me I'm really excited to hopefully bring you more of these if anybody likes it please let us know or drop us an email and I'll do my best to answer the rest of those questions when I can schedule another webinar I hope you all have an amazing 2024 and I'm wishing you all the best. Thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with me.